Welcome to the Toffee Blues, your source for all things Everton. And welcome to a show where I'm joined by Paul McAllister. We're going to be reacting to the news that today, Marcel Brand, or yesterday when the show goes out, Marcel Brand has signed a brand new contract at Everton, uh, an extension to his deal, which he's of course been here for three years now. And it's finally, you know, we've come to the end of his contract. There was a lot of talk about this, what the deal has done. Uh, in Bill Kenwright's very typically poetic words, he took one round of Z cars for him to sign his contract. Uh, but, you know, enough of the Kenwrightisms, if you like. We'll get straight into it, Paul. Uh, what's your take on the brand's deal? Is this a good move for us? Yeah, it's a good move. Um, it's another three-year deal, isn't it? The same as the original one he signed when he first joined the club, which I was surprised when he first signed a three-year deal because I think directors of football, when they come into a club, and especially when you come into a club that was in the States Evan were in when he got here in 2018, I think you needed longer than three years to sort of make any sort of real impact on the pitch. So I felt like that first deal he signed was essentially one big long trial, wasn't it? Where we just see what he can do, if he can shift some dead wood, and if he can, and he can sign a few good players, then we'll keep him on for the long term. And if he can't, then we can get rid of him and go with another director of football, and he won't have been here long enough to make any sort of real long-term impact. But it looks like it's the first thing, isn't it? He's passed whatever criteria they set for him and they've decided to keep him on and they've given him another three-year deal. So it will mean he will have, he'll be, have been at the club for six years at least. And six years is plenty of time for a director of football to sort of really leave his mark and see what the state of play is and whether or not the club was better for bringing him in or whether the club just stood still, whether the club was worse off. But it's a good deal because I know Marcel Brand isn't universally popular. I know he's made some decisions that haven't worked out at all well, but he's made some decisions that have been really, really shrewd and really good. And overall, I think the positive impact he's brought has definitely outweighed the negative. And I think he definitely merited a three-year deal and we have to just keep faith in him now because... The initial part of his job is done. He's cleared out most of, if not all, the dross. It's basically building from here. There's no more cleaning up any more mess. Everything he does from now is just build on top of the platforms that's already been put down. So we'll see really what he's made of now. Yeah, I mean, I think this is a good point. Like, you know, his first three years has almost been completely spent getting rid of the dead wards and relieving the FFP strain that we've had for a long time because of the bad summer of spend than we had the year before he joined. Yeah, essentially, he's been basically cleaning up a mess rather than decorating the house himself, hasn't he? He's been cleaning up what was left by the people who were, who were living here before him. Steve Walsh. <laughs> um, as I mentioned, I, there are some fans who just absolutely don't like the fella. I think most of them are just trolls and one and a negative, as we've mentioned on the channel before. Just those yeah, We have a fair share to do among us, to be fair. And yeah, yeah. supporters who are just oh, never happy unless they're moaning about something. And they're typically the fans who go hardest against brands. But we've also got some fans who just love everything he does. I mean, I don't think our Terry would mind me saying this, but our Terry is a massive Marcel Brands fan. And I, I don't think I've ever heard Terry slag off brands, really. If nothing comes to mind, and I'm sure if Terry was doing this video with yeah, he'd be rattling rat rat off loads of brilliant things that he attributes to Marcel Brands and why this is such a brilliant thing he's staying. I'm happy he's staying as well, but I'm not universally uh, pra happy with what everything he's done. I think he's definitely made some bad decisions. He's had some signings that have just definitely not worked, and you could tell on paper they were probably not going to work, and he should have been cleverer than that. But he's also had some things that were just beyond his control, like injuries and like a manager just not knowing what he's doing and having to sack him and having to bring in someone else um, he's had obviously all the uncertainty going on with the stadium but that he's not involved in thankfully that looks like it's um, we're over that anxiety now the stadium's definitely happening uh, so Marcel Brand staying at the club I just think it's a good thing at the long term um, it's a good thing long term because he is learning certain lessons. I've got faith that he's a man that who won't repeat mistakes. I don't think he's made any mistake he's made so far. I think he has not made more than once. He's, if he's made a mistake, he's learned from it and never not done it again. So 
I'm glad he's staying. And I think Everton are going to be stronger now in three years at the end of his new deal. Just the same way we were stronger now than we were three years ago when he first got here for his first deal. Yeah, certainly. I think the other thing to remember is that, of course, when Brands first came in, the club was chaos. We were sacking managers left, right and centre. And, you know, an extra three years of the same director of football is, you know, it's continuity and it brings stability. Yes, yeah, stability is a precious thing in football, isn't it? Some people say stability is boring, but stability is also enables you to plan long term and you don't achieve success in football without planning long term. Unless you're Chelsea. <laughs> do you know what I mean? But um oh, they do it. Yeah, do you know what I mean? But other than them, I can't think of any club that is always chopping and changing, yet is still successful on the pitch. I, I, I just can't. Look at the likes of Liverpool. They've achieved what they've achieved over the last few years because of stability, because they had someone, a director of football in Michael Edwards and a manager who they knew what he was doing and they stuck with them and they gave them the tools and they were patient. And the same with guess you could say Tottenham. I know they've not won a trophy, but they're a lot better now than they were seven or eight years ago when they were just, you know, typical Tottenham, weren't they? And they were under the likes of um, Martin Yole and Wande Ramos and Harry Redknapp. I just... it's it, With brands, it's it's strange, though, because, as I've touched upon, I do get why some fans are not absolutely in love with him because he has made a couple of really poor decisions oh, along yeah. the way. I think... Yeah, yeah. the will be shaped one on a Fabian Delf shaped one. Yeah, um, you've mentioned it now. Should we, should we just quickly battle off some signings he's made and what we think of them? Yeah, we'll go through the signings that he's made, of course. Yeah, yeah we'll, uh, we'll go through the signings in a sec. We'll get into them. Um, but let's just, uh, for now, uh, go through the summers. He's had, he's had three summers here, hasn't he? And the way I judge directors of football, personally, is I mark them out of 10 for every summer window that they have. His first summer in 2018, when he got here, I would give that personally a 7 out of 10. He signed the likes of Bernard and Mina and Gomez and Richarlison. I know Richarlison came to Silva, but he was Richarlison was signed under Brands' watch, wasn't he? Dean, like those other players. Probably the most yeah. popular one of them all. Dean, yeah, yeah. So I'd give it a 7 out of 10. Signed some really good players, some mediocre players, and none of those players we did get that summer turned out to be absolutely rubbish, did they? Um, season after that was the opposite. It was just not all his fault, I granted, but it was just a disaster, wasn't it? We had Gabamon, who is just cursed. It's not not Brander's fault. He's got the injuries he's had, and there was nothing to suggest that he was going to get those injuries because he hadn't had any major problems in his career up until then. But Gabamon was a disaster. Moise Keane didn't work, did he? Had, um, he didn't really come in and make any massive impact on the pitch. Uh, Fabian Delph, that's another big, big bad one because Fabian Delft did have a history of injuries so what we were going and getting this player who was in his latter stage of his career past his prime wasn't wanted by another club who's above and us cropped. and crop I thought we'd have shoot. learned our lessons yeah I thought we'd learned our lessons I thought we were we had gotten past the point of signing cast offs from clubs who were trying to get up there and compete with so that was a really bad one you've touched on a Wobie we've massively overspent on him don't think a Wobie I know I was going Mad about a Wolby in the post match um, a few days ago after um, Brighton right. and Tottenham. I know, and I was calling a Wolby everything. I don't think a Wolby is an absolutely god awful footballer. I just don't think he was the right player. He belongs at Everton. Don't think he suits the club. I be massively overspent on him. And again, he was essentially a cast off from another club who are in and around the areas we want to get in at the time. So a Wolby and Delft were absolutely terrible. Delft didn't. Um, Keane was a gamble that didn't work because he was young and Gabamin was just a disaster because of injuries and who else did we get that summer? Didn't Jonas get a centre-half, did we? We never kicked a ball. Yeah, Jonas Lossel didn't kick a ball. We didn't get uh, we didn't get um, Zuma, even though we spent all, se- all summer chasing him. And or we were Saha. Good. Or Saha. Didn't get them. We were ne- never getting in them, so what were we wasting our time for, even going for them? So And then the season after that, the season... Last, last summer, it was a really good one again. But 2018, I gave a, I'd give a 7 out of 10. 2019, I'd give a 2 out of 10. And the summer just gone last year with Carlo, when we got Rodriguez and Alan and Decore, I'd give that a 9 out of 10. Because we signed some players who come into the side and made us instantly a lot better. Didn't well, we? I think so, 
the big one for me was Godfrey. I, I think that's the one that's really surprised me. He was the he was probably Godfrey. the least talked about of the four of them, and he's probably been probably had the biggest impact. I mean, the core has as well in terms of how badly we miss him now. But Godfrey has been so crucial this season with his flexibility and yeah. with bad injury he's crisis. Been- yeah, squad depth signings. That's he was brought in to be squad depth, and he's been absolutely brilliant. And even other players who were brought in for squad depth, like um, Ols- um Robin Olsen, he's done reasonably well, hasn't he? I don't think anyone would say he's been a failure, even if they don't think he's good enough to, um, to be signed. He hasn't come in and been so bad that people just can't wait to see the back of him. And exactly. like it was, like it was with Delph, and basically fair summer was. Mediocre to good. Second summer was absolutely god awful. Last summer was absolutely great. So I'd give him a six, six and a half out of ten over his cross of his three years, which is just about a pass grade, but it's still a pass grade. And if you get a pass grade, you should be kept on. So yeah, I'm, I'm reasonably happy with that. But what are your what are your opinions of the summers he's been here and the signings? Yeah, I think as I, as I agree with all of those, I was very pleased with the first summer. I think Bernard's probably the only one where the jury's very much out. And I think Media that always will. Isn't he? Yeah. It always will be because he's such an inconsistent player who's probably a very good player, but not good at this league. You just, I just don't think he's made this league. Every other sign in that summer was good. Um, yeah, and, and, I know Andre Gomez. He signed Andre Gomez, didn't he? Um, I know... Now, it's gone the way it has, hasn't it? He's not the player who we all thought he was going to be, and he's not even the player he was in that first season that he was here. But there are other circumstances that have played a big part in that being the case, and that's not um, Brands' fault. It's not Brands' fault. The lad uh, had his leg snapped in half, was it? Yeah, and also he was, he was signed to play in Silver system. We've got a different manager. Exactly. So even the players who are not, First teamers anymore, or players who were happy to have in and around the squads, the likes of Bernard, who's as you said, mediocre at best, Gomez, who's nowhere near consistent enough. I don't really think you can hold them against France because they were signings who we were happy with at the time. And when they came in, they made a difference in the short term because they, they were, they were season, good performers, good performers that yeah, first season. They were, they were, and the reason that their forms of their former fell off, especially in the case of Gomez, is nothing to do with Brands. So yeah, I agree with that. The first summer was good. What, what did you make of the second summer? Uh, disastrous. Yeah, just absolutely awful, wasn't it? It, 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 it? it looked so good on paper. Everyone was so excited about Moyes Key. And again, it's not worked out because he was young and maybe he didn't have the hunger to come to an Everton after being at Juventus and being made a big fuss of, like he's this wonder kid and he's going to go on to brilliant things. And all of a sudden he's in a new country playing for a club that he's got no connection with under a manager he probably barely knows and he's got a lot of other things going on like apparently he's had he had issues with his dad didn't he his dad was always mouthing off in the media in Italy which can't have been out that can't have been out for him being away from his mum and having his dad causing problems for him so yeah Keane didn't really work the Bamman you can't really can't even go into that, can we? It's no just bad, that's season. just bad luck. Um, that's just bad luck, but I will be in Delft. It's Delft and I will be really. And for me, I think you know, in the past, like you know, you've got your Delft and a Wobies, and to a lesser extent as well, Bernard, who uh on long contracts and were saddled with. And I think we saw obviously it looks as though Josh King isn't gonna work out as planned, but that's a six-month deal that if um, if bar and the unthinkable and he like scores at every game until now I think we're going to release him in the summer we've got that option to release him rather than be saddled with him for another two years and I think that's exactly. another sign that is another sign that as you said he's Brands has made lessons. mistakes yeah. but he's learning his lessons and we're yeah, moving forward he's at, he signs a cast off from an up from a Premier League rival in Arsenal signs a Wobie to be a starter when he was a cast off from Arsenal a club we're trying to overtake at the time and it was a terrible decision he signed a cast off from Man City to be a squad player in Delft when he was crocked he hasn't done that since he hasn't signed any more cast off crocks from teams above us he hasn't signed any more cast off uh, youngsters from other teams to, like uh, to be a starter and players he signed since then to fill in the squad the likes of Robert Olsen 
he's not a crock. He's not at the end of his career. He, um, and who else have we got? Godfrey. Young players like Godfrey. Godfrey. He's not. He wasn't brought in to be a starter like a Wolvie was, and he wasn't coming from a club where he was taking a step down to join us. Do you know what I mean? So he's not going to these bigger clubs and getting their players who are either too crock to get in their team or are not consistent enough. He's going to clubs and filling in the squads with other players who young, are. He wants young, hungry players, and he starts to get that young, hungry players who coming up from the championship are treating it as it should be. An absolute honour to play for Everton. Yeah, and even when he's going to get players who are not necessarily young to fill in the squad, like Josh King and Robin Olsen, the bang in the middle of the careers, and they're not here on long deals. Olsen's only on a loan, so we can send them back if we don't want them at the end of the season. And Josh King's only here on a six-month deal. Exactly, I think. And the thing is, all of these players are coming from positions where they, they treat it as a privilege to play for Everton, whereas... I worry when sometimes when we bring in these players who were like Arsenal casts off that they think they're doing us a favour or something. Well, yeah, they're viewing it as a step down, aren't they? They don't, mm. you know, for a fact that if they were given the option to stay at the club we're buying them off, they would have chose to stay. For what we would have been told by Emery at Arsenal, I'm going to use you properly this season and I'm going to get you in the team and I'm going to treat you as if you're an important part of the squad. But what we wouldn't have wanted to come to Everton, he would have been happy to stay there and fight for his place and show what he's got. And if Delph would have been offered a new deal by City, he'd have he'd have snapped found someone off. to get a he'd have snapped around, he'd have been fighting people to get a pen off them to sign the contract, wouldn't he? Whereas the likes of Godfrey, as you said, it's a big step up from Everton to Norwich. He knows he's got it all to prove when he comes here. And even players like Olsen and King, who are again their cast offs from their clubs, well, Olsen especially. But Olsen was coming here on loan. So even if he does get here and just treat it like an holiday or he's doing us a favour, we can just send him back and we're not saddled with him. And the likes of Josh King, if he gets here, he doesn't do the business. Like, you could say Bernard hasn't or um, Moise Keane hasn't. We're not just lumber with them. We can just sell him in the summer. Your contract's finished now. Go find someone else to play for. And even Moise Keane, I know we were saying it hasn't worked out, but we're probably going to sell him in the summer for a big profit. And you know, that's, at the end that's, of the day... That's worked out very well, I think. At if... the end of the day, I, I, you, can't ha- you can't say a deal's a failure if you sell that player on for a profit, no matter what. That's, even if they I'll don't... Honest. Make, that's the yeah. first evidence we've actually got of Marcel Brands doing what he's been known for doing in his previous roles at PSV and RKT Valve and the teams that he's sort of been the director of football of before. And it was always about bringing in these gems that people were unheard of almost and then raising profits when you sell them on for big money. Increasing, increasing value, yeah. He's done it with Moise Keane, essentially. Uh, even though Moise Keane in a didn't make way. any impact. In a roundabout way, even though Keane didn't come in and make any impact on the pitch, really, he still increased his value. And you could say the same with Godfrey. Now, God forbid we sold Godfrey, but let's just say we were forced to tomorrow. We could, if, let's say Man City came in to buy Godfrey. We could sell Godfrey for far more than we bought him for. And we bought him not for cheap, didn't we? Spend 20 million on him. 20 million, yeah. But I think yeah, we could triple we, that now. Could, yeah, could triple that now. Same, whereas we're not going to make any money on the likes of a Wobi or the likes of um, Bernard. Well, we didn't spend any money on Bernard, but if we sell Bernard, we're not going to sell him for much, much, are we? No, not at all. No, so maybe that was a bad example, Bernard. But other players like um, Gomez, if we decided to sell Gomez, we certainly wouldn't. We're not going to make any money on Gomez if we shift him. Definitely so, not making any money on Sigurdsson. No, but Sigurdsson was signed by that. This is Terence's favourite quote, honestly. He says this to me all the time, and I can't remember who said it. It was just some... I think it was a random Everton Twitter account. I, 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 um, Marcel... Uh, not Mark. Steve Walsh. This was the summer um, of that period where, you know, when um, Allardyce was here and he took the players away to, like, Dubai or something for, like, a, um, a warm-weather training camp. Do you remember? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, it was in, like, the winter period, uh, just after Christmas. Um, in 2018, when um, Allardyce was here, he took them, all the players away, and Allardyce um, went over with them, and Steve Walsh went over with them, and there was a picture going round of Steve Walsh wearing his Everton like shorts, his Everton like um, sweat sweatshirt, and flip flops with socks, no, just looking like someone's granddad on his holidays. Honestly, mm-hmm. he had a cap on. Yeah, he, he looked like Jimmy Martin. Do you know what I mean? Just an, an old man with a cap on, 
an Everton sweatshirt, Everton shorts, Everton um, socks and sandals. And he was eating like, it was something like, it, was like, it looked like a cake or a pasty or something like that. And I mentioned this because someone put on Twitter, fraudulent swamp creature. <laughs> and then his picture, he describes Steve Walsh in, um, in that image I've just described as a fraudulent swamp creature. And our Terry to this day gets a tickle. Out of that. He still brings it up. Do you remember when that fella called Steve Walsh an arrogant, a fraudulent swamp creature and he just laughs for some reason it tickled his funny bone? <laughs> oh. Yeah, we've come a long way. I think it's safe to say under Marcel Banners, we've come a long way from the fraudulent swamp creature. Yeah. Steve Walsh, but to, to this day, has that fellow, has he worked in football since he left Everton? No, he hasn't. Not that I'm aware. <laughs> if, the, if anyone's got any common sense in the game, which we haven't. We just spoke for over an hour on another recording we did say, saying they haven't. But if anyone has any common sense, he wouldn't get anywhere near any job in football ever again because the damage he did to Everton when he was here, the fella belongs in prison, <laughs> honestly. Yeah. The, the absolute crap he lumbered us with. He set us back five years minimum with his business. Yeah, well, we're talking here. about Marcel Brand's progress in the show here. We're three years into the project and we're still trying to get back on track. And, you exactly. Know, this is the project. It's like the first three years we've seen of Marcel Brands have been clearing up Walsh's mess. And yeah. with that in mind, we'll finish up. Um, what do you see the future holding for Marcel Brands then in the next three years? What can we achieve now? Um, what do I think we should be aiming for or what do we realistically uh, think will happen? Uh, both. We should be aiming to get in the top four, definitely. I think it's possible as well. Look, West Ham have proven it this season, and Leicester have shown that they that it's possible to do it year on year, not just if you have a really good season like West Ham are having. Leicester have basically broken in now. Um, I think we should be looking to just do what Leicester have done, just gate crash there, gate crash that top four monopoly and stay there and be there season after season after season. Like looks like they're gonna be. We should yeah. be looking to do that. We should be looking to win a trophy because I think we're not quite there yet, but we're only maybe one or two players short of having a squad that is capable of winning a trophy. We've got an 11, starting 11, that's capable of winning a trophy, I think. But we need to have a bench uh, squad depth now. We need 15 or 16 players who we can hang our hat on and think, right, that 15 or 16 players can hang with anyone in this Premier League. It can on, on its day, that team can beat absolutely anyone, no matter what type of day the, the opposition are having. Even if the opposition are having a really good day, we can still beat them as long as we have a good day as well. We need, so we need to be looking to get in the top four, win a trophy, and just maybe make some money on a few players if we can. A few young, sign a few youngsters or bring a few youngsters through who, who are already here and look to sell them off for profits. Even if it's only small profits, bring people who are in the under 23s and the under 18s now who we don't think are really going to make it to the top um, the first team and play consistently. Look to sell them on for a couple of hundred grand and just basically bring some money into the club instead of just letting these players waste the lives of these reserves and then get released on a free at the end of the contract. And then we've spent all this time and energy bringing them along and then just... Because they couldn't quite manage for nothing. There's got to be something at the end of it. Either these players break through and play a part of the first team or we sell them on for a profit. That's what we've got to be doing. So start making some money on the youth players, in, in the, either the ones we don't want or the ones who are de- want to leave because we can't guarantee them the minutes that they want. So sell them on. Um, the likes of, what's the example I'm thinking of? Like Kieran Dow, he was a good example. A player who clearly was ready for first team football consistently, but he wasn't, he wasn't willing to wait his turn at Everton. There was too many players in front of him. So we sold him and let him go and wished him luck. And he's doing quite so, well, actually, to be fair to him. Yeah, he has, fair enough. Yeah, so start making some players, some money on youth players who we've got no plans for. Start, uh, win a trophy, uh, just any trophy we can get and get in the top four at least once. Yeah. Honestly, at least yeah. once. Because if we get in it once, then we can build on that and look to finish in the top four every season. Yeah, certainly. So, you know, we'll all look forward to that. Another three years of Marcel Brands and, you know, him and Carlo, you know, we could get a little bit of a solid partnership there and, like I say, stability for the future, which we haven't had a lot of in the post-Moyes era. No, we haven't had any, really. The only 
stability we had under Martinez. How long did that last for? Because it wasn't stable under him the last season. He was here. It was chaos for him, wasn't it? It was only stable Absolutely. for maybe for one year and maybe the first couple of months of his second season before the wheels came off then. So, yeah, just we need stability. And I know stability, some people think, is boring. But long success wasn't achieved anywhere without stability. So we need to get some stability and then hopefully the success will take care of itself because we've got the manager who can deliver success and we've got players who can deliver success and hopefully we've got players who are going to come in who are going to be capable of delivering success as well. No, well, it's still open. Um, we'll leave it at that anyway. Uh, yeah, thank you guys for tuning in on the Toffee Blues. Give us a subscribe for more content. Give this video a like and drop us a comment. Let us know your opinions on the Marcel Brand's new contract. Yeah, but until next time, guys, thank you for tuning in and we'll see you later. Everton!